Hey gang, welcome back to, uh, I believe this is episode 4 of my acoustic guitar build. And uh, in this episode, uh, I'm going to be spending time working on the curved linings. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the curved lining is, uh, it's uh, wood that supports the rim of the guitar. It also provides some surface area for the top and the back. Uh, to attach to something, uh, some glue area for that to uh, to glue onto. Uh, so it, it it starts out as a square piece of stock that I mill up, and then I mill it up into uh, a triangle type shape, and I do thousands of <laughs> what feels like thousands of curve cuts, and it turns it into something very flexible like this that can uh, conform to the upper and lower bouts and around the waist of the guitar. And when it's all said and done, uh, it, there's a lip there that you can glue, like I said, the, the top and the back to, as well as provide a lot of support there for the sides since they're so thin. Uh, so, uh, alright, enough of my talk, let's just get to it. So one of the first things I wanted to do uh, before I get working on the uh, curved linings was I need to clean up uh, the sides a bit so the taper isn't perfect. Um, you see here I'm putting a level on it and there's a high spot there in the waist. So I'm just using my, my block plane and I'm just taking off uh, little by little a little bit little bit at a time just to get uh, it straight from the heel block to the tail block and it's kind of tedious you have to be careful make sure that you don't uh, you know tear out the grain uh, as you're planing you just want to take off a little bit at a time and get the, the sides as straight as possible within that taper and you just keep you keep using the straight edge and and uh, get that sized right and then once you get down to the heel block and the tail block you want it to be flush uh, with that block so it just takes uh, a little bit of time to do that uh, you know planing and checking planing and checking it again here I'm just gonna turn it around and uh, work on the other side because uh, uh, both sides have the same issue. It's basically a little bigger in the waist on the top and the bottom. Uh, and then the heel block itself and the tail block, they have to be sort of leveled out as well once you get it even. And I spent a bunch of time doing this. Now that I got the sides uh, where I want them, I'm, I'm just going to take a sanding block and this is uh, 220 I believe and I'm just sanding all the rough uh, saw marks off of the edges here and uh, I get it night the transition between the sides and the block, uh, work on getting that pretty smooth and just continue to sand it. Uh, you know, you have to do this on both sides obviously. Uh, and then once I got that finished, um, you know, I like to sand the inside of the sides, uh, 120, 220, and then when it's all said and done and all the bracing's on, uh, go to 320 grit. Uh, there's a lot of watermarks from the bending process, some stains that you can get out uh, if you go progressively finer with your sandpaper. Uh, you know, this is just takes a lot of time. Uh, sanding with uh, with a block, switching papers, just spending some time getting it just right. Uh, 
you know, I, actually my sanding block is kind of hard to tell there, but um, I bevel the edges so that uh, I can use the beveled edge and sort of roll it uh, around the curves and get into the tight spots. And, uh, you know, these this mahogany sands pretty well, cleans up pretty good. Uh, all the water staining is pretty superficial when it comes out uh, by the time you get to uh, the 220 grit. Uh, that that staining is out. Okay, so here I'm beginning to prepare um, my stock for the kerf linings, and I'm, I'm basically using the same. Uh, wood I was using, the mahogany I was using for the, the neck and the heel block, it's a, basically a piece of uh, a leaf from a dining room table. So what I have to do is sand off uh, all the polyurethane finish and any of the stain that was used when they finished that top. And I just run it through my belt sander here, my, uh, I think that's what, the surfacer. I've got a couple of different pieces here I'm using. Uh, and once I get that sanded down, uh, I'm going to cut this, uh, rough cut it here. It's basically, I'm cutting it about three quarter, three quarters of an inch and by about five eighths of an inch. And here I'm cutting off that first piece. Um, and then once I have that cut, uh, I will use that piece to set my fence, uh, to the right size and, and then I'll run through the rest of my stock and when I'm all done I'll have a bunch of pieces maybe like six or eight pieces uh, of rough cut mahogany here that I will then uh, rip into triangles so the rectangular pieces I'll take on the bandsaw and I'll set my bandsaw to about 25 degrees the table I'll turn it to about 25 degrees and I'll run it through and I'll rip those rectangles uh, diagonally and create triangle stock. Uh, kind of a blurry video here. I do apologize. This camera stinks. Uh, but, uh, you know, I spend a bunch of time running it through the bandsaw and I'll cut it once and I'll get a triangle at one out of one half and then I'll take the off cut, run that through and, and get it to the same dimensions as the previous triangle I cut. And I do that subsequent times with all the uh, rectangles that I milled up. And when I'm done, uh, I'll have all my kerf lining stock, as you can see here, all the triangles ready to be uh, kerf cut. Now, before I can uh, cut all the kerfs, I just have to trim these all down to uh, roughly about 16 inches because the throat on my... Um, bandsaw is only so big so I, I got to get them down to a short uh, length all right let's take a closer look here at um, this jig so now that all the curved linings are cut you can see they're just uh, triangle blanks basically <clears throat> I'm just using this simple jig here uh, to cut each of the curves and all it is is basically a sled that rides in the channels here on my bandsaw and I have a stop here on one side and a witness mark here on my fence and make to use it you just <coughs> excuse me make one cut and then slide over your cut over to the witness mark I made which is roughly um, you know about an eighth of an inch over from the previous cut and that'll help space uh, the kerf cuts evenly uh, along the length of the kerf lining. Let me show you how it's done.
right, now that all of the curved linings are milled up and curved on the bandsaw, it's time to uh, install them. So I basically have a thousand little clamps and uh, I start gluing it onto the sides. And uh, there's going to be glue squeeze out. Uh, I like using a six inch rule, like I mentioned in previous videos, to scrape that off. And one of the things I also do is keep the curved lining about an eighth of an inch proud of the sides and that allows me to have a little uh, stock uh, hanging over the sides for when I do the radiusing of the sides to, uh, for the radius top and it allows that portion of the curved lining where the tops and the, the top and the back glue onto them to be radius uh, at the same angle as the what the, the top and the so and the uh, soundboard will be radius to, if that makes sense. So it just allows me to contour uh, this this curved lining to that radius. And you can see here, you just methodically go through um, attaching the curved lining um, to the sides and just constantly scraping out uh, all the glue squeeze out. It, you can see here. How flexible it is and I'm just sort of dry fitting this just to get find out how much of this lining I need to break off and you can literally just kind of bend it and break it off right where it needs to be if you're a little short just uh, insert one or one or two little pieces to make up any gap um, you know just spread a little glue clamp it on and uh, and, and let it dry uh, the, the, this curve lining uh, is very flexible. Once you get all those curves in there, <clears throat> the, the material that's left over between the curves is probably only about a 32nd of an inch. So it becomes really flexible, uh, almost as flexible as paper, and very fragile as well. Um, and here I am scraping out the glue as well. If I get any glue between uh, the curve cuts, I try to get that out as well. I just think it looks really nice when you have a, a high-end guitar that, that has no glue, uh, see, you know, no glue squeeze out left around the uh, curve linings. Here it is all done. Now, before I was uh, could get the back going, I ran out of clamps, and I use these uh, Harbor Freight clamps. They're just perfect for these curve linings. They have little tips on them that are, are articulating, so they kind of conform to the to the angled uh, curved lining really well and they're strong they, they're they have a lot of tension on them they hold them just perfect so you know if for like a six pack they're a dollar 99 so I went in uh, took a break and drove to Harbor Freight and basically bought every I bought about 12 packs of them I cleared out the whole shelf uh, and it probably only cost me like $25 uh, so here it is both sides clamped all complete and just gonna All right, gang, so there you have it. Uh, Kerf linings installed on the sides. And on the next episode, episode five, we will be uh, gluing on the back bracing onto the back, cutting that out the sides. Uh, we will be radiusing uh, the sides of the guitar, and hopefully we will get to gluing the back onto the sides. Yeah, that will be a big step, and I'm pretty excited about that, and uh, appreciate everybody watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you all next time.